Charles Rosen was a set designer for Seoul and he was making a mock-up of this house and this playground and these stores and he had a he has twin boys and at the time they were three years old and I thought he was making a, a present for his boys and he said no this is going to be um, the mock-up you know they build a set in in miniature to go to the set shop just like an architect does a, a rendering he said no we're gonna we're gonna do some kind of experimental show for little kids he said you're a teacher right and I said yes and he said well it's going to be for preschool kids. And I said, oh, never mind. He said, why are you taking that attitude? Well, my idea of kiddie television, you got to remember, you probably don't. There are people that will remember what kiddie television looked like before Sesame Street. It was some nice lady saying, now let's all be a new good doobie. I said, oh, no, that ain't me. <laughs> and he said, well, that ain't us either. He said, don't worry, Sesame Street's not going to be like, I don't even think it had a name yet. He said, it, it's experimental. It's not going to be like that. And he actually told me about an audition they were having for uh, some of the characters. They said that they were going to have four human hosts that would be like educational guides for the children. Well. I can't figure out whether he didn't really know or whether he just neglected to tell me. They were thinking about, now this is 1969, they were thinking about a Joan Baez type folk guitar playing type lady. Now this is 1969, I looked like Angela Davis. I did not look like Joan Baez. I had big hair short skirts and show tunes when I showed up at this interview. <laughs> and they looked at me and they said, uh, yes. I love to tell this story to, to teenage black kids because I tell them when people don't expect you, they rush to the door and say, can I help you? Because <laughs> it happens to them a lot. And I said, oh, I'm here to audition. I think maybe they had the name Susan, I'm not sure. And they said, where's your guitar? I said, huh? I said, oh, I don't play a guitar. My nails were longer than they are now. Uh, flaming red fingernails, big hair, short skirts, show tunes. They, they said, well, stand over there. Now, I like to talk to kids about defining moments in your life. And I especially like to talk to kids that are, you know, kind of rebellious and everything. And I, I go around the room. What would you have done at that point? What would you have done? What have, and I tell them that by my being willing to virtually stand in the corner, I have a career. I could have left at that point. That was a defining moment in my life that I didn't even realize. So I'm standing in the corner. Everybody's playing their guitars. Now they're taping the interviews. They're taping the auditions because for a year and a half, they have taken everything from Sesame Street. I suppose they told you, they tested it on children. That's why the show is so, so popular. Everything that kids didn't like, we threw away. I'm standing there and people are playing their guitars and they're singing away and they're playing. And I, I think something about guitar players, they, they like organically get into their guitars. So here's what I think the camera saw. You know, and especially if they wrote the song, then they're really intense. Well, I'm standing there and I'm standing there. So finally, everybody auditions. They're getting ready to leave. I said, wait a minute. Uh, I came to sing for you. And I sneaked off my job up in the Bronx. I came to sing for these folks. I was going to put a cross body check on them. I wasn't letting them out of the room. <laughs> so. I said, I came to sing for you. Uh, may I talk to the piano player and sh give him my, my show tunes? You know? He said, we didn't hire a piano player. Everybody here plays a guitar but you. I said, but I came to sing. They said in a less than uh, encouraging way, okay, sing. Here's my audition for Sesame Street. I laid my little show tunes down and here's my audition. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. 
here is my handle, here is my stuff. And I looked right at the camera and I said, come on kids, everybody sing. And the children in the daycare center stood up and began to sing with me, tip me over and pour me out. Now that was all that babysitting, daycare, day camp, summer camp, all culminated in a 35 year career. Now who knew? I mean, you know, you can't plan that stuff. I, that's why I said, when you said, how did you get your career? I don't know, <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. You just keep going, I guess, you know. So when they looked at the children looking at me, uh, Ed Palmer, who is head of, um, of research, said that was the first time they were totally sure that if they invited children to participate with us directly by looking at them, because they think you can see them, you know. They, they think you see them, see, and you see them. The one little boy said, can you see me, see you, see me? When you see me, see you, see me? I said, huh? But they think that you see them. So when you invite them to come and participate, they do. And that's what got me my job. I was surprised because I didn't play guitar. I promised them I would learn. I took guitar lessons. I played so badly, they said, that, that, that's okay. Not all black people got it, do they? <laughs> I said, I grew up in a white neighborhood. What do you want from me? Anyway, but I played so badly, they said, that's okay. <laughs> we'll get somebody else to play. You just be Susan, okay? So that's what happened.